see his hands there? See he's holding up four fingers? He's secretly flashing to me that he's going to cut interest rates four times in the next year. Yeah, you're in with the in crowd when you're hanging with me, man. I got Jerome passing me secret signals. Hey, everybody, Courtney Smith here with uh, our Wall Street winners. Here we are in mid-July already. Unbelievable. Uh, all right, let's get going. This is unbelievable. Well, actually, unfortunately, it's very believable. All right. So a lot, some changes in my attitude this week. First of all, the S&P looked really good. We, we were getting this mini kind of grinding higher type of price action. It's all steady. That's all good. All right. And we've made new all time highs three times this week. So you can you can never fade a bull market. You always got to go with the flow. But there's some concerns. I'll tell you about those in a minute. Uh, this is one of the concerns. Look at the Dow. I mean, it just took off, right? I mean, Thursday, Friday, just pop -erific for sure. In the upper right-hand corner, look at the buying pressure. That's the green line. It skyrocketed to the highest levels uh, in a year, basically. And you can see that the selling pressure approached the lows that we've made in the last year. Now, that's fantastic, except, oops, buying pressure like that is not sustainable. So notice every single time we got buying pressure that high, the market sold off. In other words, the market's gone too far too fast. It's going to have to sell off. Uh, people are going to start taking profits, that kind of thing. So it's not an acceleration of the trend when you get that much buying pressure. In other words, everybody who wanted to buy has bought. There's nobody left to buy. So this is actually a little bit negative at this point. NASDAQ made new all-time highs, so it's chugging along, joining the crowd. A seasonality, we still don't have a bull seasonality, but as you can see, the purple predictor is really taking off. Um, it looks like the smart money's buying the small cap stocks. They've been, they've been lagging now for the whole year. Uh, since February, at least, they've been lagging, and it looks like the smart money thinks they're going to start to catch up. So the smart money's buying, and I'd like to hitch my uh, wagon to their horse. So I think we're going to, I don't know if we're going to go make new highs, but I think that we're going to be rallying up to the 159 level. And I certainly hope they break through the highs, because that would turn our seasonality indicator bullish. Now, here's another problem in the market. We're now in a seasonally negative period. The next two weeks, the market should go down. So I've shown you something that looked great, but then on further reflection, it's not that great, which is the buying pressure. Now we see that the seasonality now turns bearish. That's not a positive either. Of course, the yield curve is still a problem. It is rallying, but still negative. Look, the sooner it gets to positive, the better as far as the economy and the bear market is concerned. But I'm still uh, believing we're going to have that bear market. Uh, asset allocation, uh, this was a bullish feature. Uh, they sold bonds, bought stocks, and that helped propel that extra buying pressure that we saw earlier. The stock market risk decator also went up a little bit. Once again, showing there's this tendency to want to take on more risk. Global shares, however, did not share in the bounty. They got hammered. There's a lot of internal political issues there, uh, economic issues. I mean, it's a mess. It's a mess. We sit around and complain about the U.S., but really, come on, where is it better? A couple of places, but not Europe. All right, now, this is one of my changes here. I believe the bonds have now put in a high. Uh, I think the bonds are now going to start to continue to go lower, and I'm going to be trying to position myself to get short bonds. That's what we have here. And, um, well, let's take a look at the bond indicators here. Let's take a look at them. So first of all, the green line is the, it's actually 10-year note yields. And it hooked up a little bit. Not enough to say it's a bull market by any means, but it just hooked up a little bit. Now go look at the blue line. It hooked up a little bit as well. Once again, not a change in trend. It's just... It's just a couple of days up. No big deal. But now look at the price of gold. It's It's been skyrocketing. You know I've been bullish on gold for weeks, maybe months now. Then look at the, the black and, and red chart of the CRB index. Gold plus CRB is about a six-month leading indicator, sometimes as little as three-month leading indicator of bond yields. 
they're now both going up. And not only that, but gold actually started going back up in April. And the CRB made a bottom, uh, April of last year, and the CRB made a bottom uh, at the end of December. So both of them were moving into a bull mode at the end of December. And my indicator requires both of them to be bullish. Now, they weren't super bullish until just the last few weeks, but the indicator switched bullish for yields, looking for higher yields, lower bonds in December of last year. That was basically six, seven months ago. So I'm really starting to build the case now that bonds are going to go much lower. I'm not short yet, but I'm going to get there. All right, the dollar, uh, who cares? Now, gold, as you know, I'm very keenly interested in it right now. And that's rather interesting because I just said, who cares with the dollar? And usually dollar and gold go in opposite directions. I think what we've done is we had this nice bull run from May and we made a lot of good money in that. And now we've gotten into a triangle formation, a pennant formation, usually broken out to the upside. We see volume has slowly gone down. Not a lot, but it has. So it looks like a legitimate pennant or triangle formation that's usually broken to the upside. If that happens, I'm going to probably get in gold, long gold. Our key indicators, all three of them are now bullish. Now, you know, the top one just barely hooked higher, but the middle one, the CRB, hooked higher uh, a month ago almost. And as you can see, the bottom one, the Japanese yen, has also hooked higher. All three are now bullish for gold. Another reason for believing it's going to break to the upside. Crude oil uh, continues on the bull mode that I've been uh, touting for weeks now. And I'm looking for this to get up into the mid 60s for sure. Uh, I don't think we're going to get to the to 66 highs or the almost 67 highs yet. It's going to struggle to get there, but we are going to get up into the lower. Let's go up two, three dollars. Uh, Bitcoin also consolidating after a mammoth increase. We got long around 4,000. We're now up. We, your, your return would be 400 percent if you're following our advice here in Wall Street winners. So this is a monster bull market. Now, right now, it's in, we're still long, uh, but we're in a consolidation. And of course, I put my stop at the at the low we made uh, about two weeks ago at this point. But right now, my bias is, is that we're going to break to the upside, break to the upside. So I'm hanging on. All right, uh, freebies. Well, what do we got? Uh, pretty much everything's the same as far as our events are coming up. Just look at that Los Angeles new event. That's the one, like I say, Orlando's pretty well full. Uh, Los Angeles still has lots of seats because we just announced it. So uh, if you're out anywhere in the western half of the U.S., you're going to want to come to that L.A. class. And then the master class, of course, coming up, it's now up to three days. On the options side, you can see the little note there. It says hotel confirmed. If you ask for the no refund room rate, should be about $87 a night. That is cheap for that nice of a hotel. Um, all right. And then, uh, of course, our bear market. And then this is something we just barely put out. Um, and it's called it's for options traders seven top trading tactics and it's a it's a um, seven video series that goes into the tactics of trading options not the strategies everybody talks about the strategies for heaven's sakes I wrote a book called option strategies but nobody's ever written a book on option tactics so I decided that people should know how to tactically trade options and we decided it was such an important subject that we decided to charge a grand total of seven bucks that's two lattes seven bucks um, we're sending out emails to everybody so click on them otherwise you can always go to support an email send an email to support at wealthbuilderllc.com and ask for information and they'll send you to the sign up page but i would highly recommend you spring for the seven bucks to get this this is really information you can't get. I've never seen it anywhere. It's unique. All right, freebies, thank you very, very much. Fully paid up members, hang on. <laughs>